Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our story time break. Um, this very short literacy program is designed for toddlers and preschool age children. And today we're just going to be talking about some different books, uh, some songs and some rhymes with the theme through the town, going through the town, talking about daily life um, and some fun books that you can be interacting with, as well as some different activities that you can be doing. So I'm gonna start with an introduction song. This is the one that we use at Tolleson Public Library. I am Lila, I am the library coordinator. Um, Lisa and Diana do our story times at the library, and this is one of the songs that they use. It's called Let's All Clap and Say Hello. I'm gonna start in three. One, two, three. Let's all clap and say hello, say hello, say hello. Let's all clap and say hello and smile at each other. Let's all clap and say hola, say hola, say hola. Let's all clap and say hola and wave to each other. Let's all clap and say me how, say me how, say me how. Let's all clap and say me how and bow to each other. Let's all clap and say bonjour, say bonjour, say bonjour. Let's all clap and say bonjour and sit down with each other. Hi friends, I hope that you're all doing well. Good. So today we are going to start with a book called Through the Town and we're gonna take a little book walk. And parents, I'm gonna show you this as an example of something that's called a follow the trail book. So if we take our little finger here, we can follow this trail all the way through the pages. This is teaching us how to control our little fingers, which is gonna help us learn how to write later. And writing is fun. We get to do it with crayons. We get to learn how to write our names, how to make scribbles, how to make drawings. So an important thing to keep in mind is that you do not have to have a follow the trail book in order to do this activity with kids. Uh, lots of kids picture books incorporate um, lines and kind of squiggle marks and any kind of little mark that they can uh, be tracing with their finger as they're reading is a really, really important um, pre-reading skill. You can talk about different maybe sounds that some of the cars make, right? So a car might go vroom, vroom, vroom. See, if there's a fire truck, a fire truck would go wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. Maybe take a break to do uh, wheels on the bus, right? If you see a bus in your picture. Any animals that you see, you could be making kind of animal sounds, right? So like there's an owl, an owl goes hoo 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 hoo. Keeping reading fun with kids for sure. Talking about different activities that they might do. Do you live in a tall building or a short building? Do you live in a building with a lot of other people that live there? Or do you live in a building where it might be just you? Do you go to the park? What kinds of things do you do at the park? What kinds of things do you see in the trees? This looks like it might be a busy place, maybe like a train station. Have you ever taken a train? Or been to an airport? Or on a boat? You ever crossed a bridge? Right? Different things that you can be talking about, about um, daily life and adventures. Oh my goodness, it looks like it's nighttime. How can you tell that it's nighttime? What kinds of things do you see in the picture that will help you to know that? I think it's nighttime because the sky got darker and now there are stars out and there weren't any stars before. Looks like that's a hot air balloon floating up into the sky, a helicopter. I'm not gonna try to make a helicopter sound. I'm not very good at it. But of course, like an airplane, maybe uh, making kind of an airplane movement, right? All different kinds of ways to be incorporating um, play and interaction into the, the books that you're engaging with. I'm gonna do um, a second book, book walk, book talk now, uh, with a really fun little book called Shark in the Park. And I'm just showing you this is a really good example of a book with rhyme, as well as uh, how to incorporate play into what it is that you're doing. So there are uh, five pre-reading daily practices um, that we work on. It's talk, sing, read, write, play, okay? 
Um, so we just talked a little bit about um, some skills and activities that you can be doing while you're reading to work with writing. Um, this one is going to be incorporating some play as well as some more writing practice. Shark, shark in the park. What is he looking through? It looks like he's looking through a telescope. Telescope. Let's see what he's looking at. Okay, so there's a little boy at the park. You can talk about the various things that are happening at the park. Again, this is a great example of how it's not necessarily a follow the trail, but there's this great path that runs through that you can use your finger to kind of trace. You can talk about the ducks. Quack, 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 right? You can make a pretend telescope. Okay. So this little boy is using his telescope. He's looking up. He's looking down, he's looking to this side, he's looking to the other side. You can be working on left and right directional skills. We made these at the library a few weeks ago, Miss Diana made these. And if you wanna put something like this together, it's actually a really, really easy um, kind of household supply kind of craft that you can make. It's just two little craft tubes. Um, you of course could use like paper towel rolls or something that you cut in half. Um, we did put a clothespin in the middle of ours, but you don't necessarily need to do that. You can just kind of glue them together. If you do have a clothespin, we just hot glued it and that just gives it a little bit more flexibility. Okay. And these are really great binoculars. I can look up. I can look down, I can look to the side, I can look to the other side. I can have all kinds of adventures with my binoculars. So back to shark in the park. What do we see here? This little boy thinks there might be a shark in the park. We can use our finger to trace, I can trace that. Do you guys think there's a shark in the park? I don't know, let's see. It's not a shark in the park. It's a little cat. It's a little cat face. Meow, meow. You see that same shape. You can trace it with your fingers. You could trace the path again. You could trace the fence up here. Trace a cloud or the word bubble. You can be using your finger to really be engaging. Here's a little boy. He's still on his adventure. He looks up. He looks down, he looks to the side, he looks to the other side. He thinks there might be a shark in the park. You can trace it. What is it this time? Caw, caw, caw. It's a fun birdie. You can see the birdie wing makes that same shape. Oh, that bird looks happy. He's saying, hello, hello. Caw, caw. Oh, there's a dog, there's a doggy. What else do we see? Oh, somebody's flying a kite. And talk about whether or not you think it might be windy since the kite's in the air. How can you tell? Snails, worms, flowers. I could have skateboarding. Okay, he's still looking on his adventure. He looks up, he looks down, he looks to the side, he looks to the other side, and he still thinks that he sees a shark in the park. What do you guys think? Do -do, do -do. Do, 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 do. It's not a shark in the park. It's his dad. See, he just has this awesome flippy hair up in the front. It's a very cool haircut, very cool hairstyle. You can see the ducks in the back. Maybe you could do five little ducks if you were interested in that song. That's widely available. Um, if you want to learn the tune, you can always look on different early literacy videos. I can also link um, to a five little duck song in the comments of this video. Those kids are playing ball. You can talk about different activities that you like to do. Again, you can be using your finger to be tracing these paths as well. So in most children's books, there are opportunities for the kids to kind of be using their fingers to be uh, tracing and learning that kind of um, fine motor control that they're gonna need in order to write. And he has such a fun day at the park. And he has this telescope that he's taking home and he can always be doing more adventures as well. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you're talking about rhyming with kids, right? So in this example, shark, park, those two words rhyme because those two, sound, those two words end the same. Shark, park, arc, arc. Kids learn to rhyme in stages. Um, so the first is being able to kind of recognize rhymes. And then the second stage is being able to produce rhymes. So asking a general question, can you think of a word that rhymes with shark is much harder than giving them two words um, that already rhyme and pointing out those two words and the same, those two words rhyme. 
Um, from there, to make it a little bit more challenging, you can always be um, introducing a third word that doesn't rhyme and then be um, asking them which word doesn't rhyme. So you might say, buy, fly, bay. Which word does not rhyme? And then you can talk about why the, the uh, two words that rhyme, buy and fly, they end the same with an I sound. And the third word, bay, ends with an A sound. I, A. You can be showing them with your mouth um, how to pronounce those words so that they can get an idea of physically kind of how to be producing um, those pronunciations. So as an example of a really easy activity that you can do, um, this is something that we made at the library a while ago with um, kind of some general city stickers that we had. Uh, but you, of course, don't need to be using stickers. All you really need is a piece of paper. And you can be encouraging the kids to work on their, uh, their writing skills, um, which is a crayon, and just kind of have them make a cityscape. So if I make a square, just like this, right, the square, and then I put a triangle on top of it. Got my nice triangle there. Maybe I can add a circle for a window. Maybe I can add a rectangle for a door. And I've got a nice little house. And this is a great opportunity um, as kids are drawing to kind of talk to them about shapes too, right? So if they see a building, um, like, for example, the house or even the trucks um, or some of these tall buildings here. You can be talking to them about what shapes those kind of buildings are made from. Um, so you can be talking to them about how to make a square, how to make a triangle, how to kind of work with those shapes, piecing them together to make different kinds of patterns. Um, so that's really great writing activity for them as well as an opportunity for expressive free play. Um, and then they can add like some smoke coming out of a chimney maybe. And then uh, they can of course be uh, using their crayons to be working on their writing, but then you can also be taking your finger when they're showing you the drawing and really reinforcing that you're recognizing those shapes and talking about the shapes. Um, if the kids aren't making really kind of defined shapes, um, that's okay. You can just kind of be pointing out um, in their drawing different kind of um, wiggling kind of lines that they're making that you can follow with your finger. Uh, you can also, of course, make them kind of an example of like, I'm gonna make a building with some shapes. What kind of shapes can I use? And you can also be asking the kids um, to give you any kind of shapes that they know. And then uh, as, a, as a drawing challenge, kind of try to see what you can make with those shapes. So it's a really um, great opportunity to be using your imagination to imagine a city or a cityscape or really anything. I'm working on your pre-writing, all you really need is a uh, a piece of paper and a pencil or a crayon, and then you're incorporating um, some math in there as well uh, by talking about shape recognition. Recognizing shapes is really important later when they're recognizing the shape of letters. Um, so like if, say for example, they want to recognize an A, it helps to have some shape recognition as well as some vocabulary to talk about shapes so that you can talk about things like um, slant or tip or um, it's like a triangle, but without the bottom. Maybe move the bottom up. Different strategies um, as they're learning how to write their letters as well. Okay, so I hope that you had fun on our little story break, friends. And now we're going to sing the goodbye song that we use during our story time at the library. And I'm going to start in three, one, two, three. See you later, alligator, in a while, crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon, give a roar, dinosaur. <sighs> um, mean glare, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly. I'll see you guys.